So emotional freedom technique is about the Chinese method of acupressure, allowing the energy to flow through the meridians. And that by stimulating points along the meridians, the energy gets flowing. The important thing to get is that you're not working on the problem. You're working on the energy flow. The body will tend to heal itself a lot of the time. And what we're discovering is, is that what blocks the body from healing is emotions and traumas. And so emotional freedom technique, the guy actually who invented this, Gary Craig, discovered that when people are upset, their body tightens. When they're angry, when they're hurt, when they're f afraid, when they're lonely, their body tends to tighten and the energy blockage. The energy is blocked and it quits flowing. So by using the acupressure, it loosens up the energy and they begin to flow again. It begins to flow again. You begin to heal from amazing different things. So um, this guy Roger Callahan was a psychologist who was beginning to study that and he started working with a woman by the name of Mary. Now he'd been working with Mary for a year on her phobia of water. She was terrified of water. If the water got any more than two inches deep, she would start to hyperventilate. So she, she didn't even like to take baths. So he mentioned, he, they're sitting talking. Like I say, it's been a year, and they're having some successes. And in a session, Mary interrupts and says, Dr. Callahan, when you say the word water, I get this knot in my stomach. Dr. Callahan says, you know, I'm studying this new technique. And there's a pressure point on your cheek or the stomach. Why don't you tap on that point and we'll continue talking. Not you guys. Oh. <laughs> okay. So Mary's tapping on her cheek and they're talking about water and about six minutes later she gets up and she goes out the door heading towards his swimming pool. And he goes after her saying, Mary, what are you doing? She says, don't worry, Doc. I'm not going to jump in. I know I can't swim. But the knot's gone. I don't think I'm afraid of water. So she walks over to the pool and she sits down she puts her feet in, and then she stands in the water, and then she wades out until she's waist deep. This is the first time in her life that she's been in water up to her waist, and there's no fear. Fear's gone, and it never came back. So Callahan gets really excited and says, I gotta learn more about this, and he starts introducing it to all of his clients. 50% of his clients are getting better in one or two sessions. Stuff is just melting away, but only for about 50%. And then he finds out that there's this thing called psychological reversal. How to explain psychological reversal? It goes like, I want to get better, but I don't want to get better. Which seems weird until I say, I want to quit smoking, but I don't want to quit smoking. Or I want to quit eating sugar, but I don't want to give up chocolate. There's this internal conflict where you both want to and you don't want to. So he added a point on the side of the hand and an affirmation. And he went from 50% to 80% success rate. So Roger wrote a book called The Five Minute Cure. It goes on national television telling everybody about it. And everybody's really excited. He's charging $10,000 if you want to come and learn it. Two day course. That's a lot of money. So one of his students who took the, ten, who took the two day course for $10,000 and then he took the advanced course five-day course for $100,000. Gary came out of it saying, I, everybody's got to know this. This is exciting stuff. And Gary reworked the program and he named it Emotional Freedom Technique and started giving it away to anybody who will listen. When Gary came to Portland, he was charging $150 for a four-hour course. He gave me 17 videotapes for free. He said, when he put them on DVD, every DVD says you can make up to 100 copies and give them away, as long as you don't charge for it. And that turned the world on its head. Everybody wanted to learn about this. And now, I mentioned that in community meeting, next week is the beginning of the 10-day World Tapping Summit. And for 10 days, there are two lectures a day, and they're all free on the internet, about how to use this technique. And they'll talk about how to do it with children, and how to do it with anxiety, how to do it with managing pain, how to do weight loss, how to increase your prosperity, 
how to improve your golf game, all of these different ways <laughs> of using this technique. It's pretty cool. I actually have several books here. I have a, a book on tapping and PTSD, and I have a top t tapping and pain management, and tapping and weight loss. I even have a one on tapping for Christians. Because sometimes, <laughs> because sometimes Christians say, well, this is from China, so it's got to be evil. And, uh, so there's a whole bunch of Christians who wrote a book on it's how it's really okay if you're a Christian to do acupressure. <laughs> so now I'm going to show you a little video and introduce you to Gary. I actually had a quick question. I have a quick answer. <laughs> Reflexology and acupressure, or are they just different term terms? Reflex, uh, reflexology is kind of, is, it is different. Reflexology says that on different parts of your body, all of the um, energy flows through those points. So the bottom of your foot is supposed to have the entire human body on the bottom of your foot, mm -hmm. on your hand. Yeah. It's, supposed to be, it's slightly different, yeah. Okay. So this is more geared towards like mental health, whereas reflexology is more towards like physical? No, this is actually very much physical health. You okay. can work on physical problems. It's just that you're only working with nine pressure points, mostly on the face and the upper torso. Okay. So this was a, um, I don't know, it's kind of like an infomercial. I, Pain was in every part of my body for many, many years. I stopped needing a doctor. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. I cannot find any traces that had ever existed in my body. I had over 80 allergies and I was allergic to the world, basically. I am not allergic to anything. I can eat anything I want to. EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques, and it's an emotional version of acupuncture, except we don't use needles. Instead, we address emotional issues. The emotional contributor to disease and ailments and physical things is far greater than the emphasis that's been given to it to date. All of us know intuitively that if we're carrying around angers and griefs and guilts and traumas, it shows up physically. If somebody is really angry, their stomach is tight, maybe the veins down out on their neck, their blood pressure goes up, emotions cause physical things. Well, you keep that body a long period of time, now you're looking at diseases. You know, in my own case, I got tired of giving medications which would just treat the symptoms and didn't really address what I thought was the underlying problem. EFT, on the other hand, zeroes right in on it, and I think that's why we get results where nothing else will. It's possible to clear emotional issues at a deep enough level that physical healing results. Acupuncture relies on the fact that there are subtle energies that run throughout the body called meridians. If they're not flowing well, the body's health does not do well. And what I found was something just very stunning. If we stimulate these meridians, tapping on them with our fingertips, it tends to balance things out and people that would have an intense emotional issue, it would just fade. Sometimes it would happen in minutes. Once you start taking care of these emotional issues and doing it correctly and really resolving them, uh, physical things start to subside as well. Immediately I could control my pain levels. I cannot think of one case it did not work on a migraine. My migraine was gone in 10 minutes. I don't have diabetes anymore. I don't have to check my blood anymore. I gave my blood meter to my sister whose cat has diabetes because he's overweight. <laughs> What we've really done is taken a very ancient, very well-established process, the ancient Chinese way of going about healing. We've dusted it off, and we've added an innervation or two, and this is the, the new forefront to me. We're on the ground floor of this new healing high-rise. When I was 10 years old, I fell down a 25-foot hay chute that landed in a sitting position on a concrete landing, compressing my spine. I underwent my first back operation in 1971, the second one in 1972, a third one in 1979, a fourth one in 1984, a fifth one in 1992, and a sixth in 2002. With each surgery, the pain just got worse. I lived in pain my entire life. 
I um, lived on Tylenol with codeine 4. I took them like candy. I uh, was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, uh, which was another devastating blow. And, and my response to that was, God, how much can I take? I was totally wheelchair bound for five years. EFT brought me out of the wheelchair, put me on arm crutches, which my doctor said would never happen. Went from arm crutches to giving up social security disability and returning to work. I see EFT cure things that are incurable all the time. When it comes to the MS, I'm completely cured. It's gone, it's non-existent in my body. I'm 54 and I'm doing jumping jacks now. I'm not saying by that we cure everything in a minute or two and in a session or two and so on, and some things take a lot longer than others, but we get astonishing results often. So what we're gonna do today is take a finger prick of blood from a few different people. We're gonna take a look at it under a dark filled microscope and actually look at what their live blood looks like. A person that's healthy, their live blood will look like a clean flowing river. And a sick person, clumping in just a murky swamp. Of those six people, three had blood picture that looked like there's some health issues that should be addressed. So we had those three people go through about five minutes of EFT. This anger. All this resentment. We drew their blood again, looked at it, and saw just total different blood pictures. No sign of clumping. I was speechless. When I could finally think again, I thought, I'm going to go home and just take my certificates, my degrees that took me years to get, and just tear them up and just, let's learn about this EFT. Normally, as a nutritionist, I would have put you on two or three months of mineral supplementation, but EFT, five minutes. People on the outside, they look at some of the things we do as, as miracles, and I'm not really a miracle worker at all, or, you know, it's just the body will tend to heal itself if its energies are allowed to flow. The biggest thing that blocks that flow of energy is how emotional issues and past traumas are held in the body. So we're getting to the core. That's why you can use it for everything. Addiction issues. Shame issues. Vision issues. Chronic fatigue. Fear of flying. Atrial fibrillation. Cravings. Diabetes. Diverticulitis. Post-traumatic stress disorder. Abundance. It was easy to lose weight. Public speaking. Insomnia. Performing in any capacity. You can go from zero desire to hot and ready. For the first time, I can probably say I truly and genuinely like myself, love myself, have acceptance. People ask me what kind of antidepressants I'm on, and I say EFT. <laughs> you know? EFT is the best thing i found, hands down. One of the great things about EFT is it's easy to learn by anyone. EFT gave me the tools to cure myself. And now I probably have seen over 2,000 clients of every walk of life on every imaginable problem with about a you know, 98%, maybe 99% success rate. And it's not me, it's EFT. I thought, well, I don't know if I believe this, but what if I just suspended my disbelief? Well, the manual is a free download on our, our website because I, I want the world to know how to do it. Do you want more than that? All right, All right. so, you want to learn this? Yeah. yeah. By the way, there is a money back guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't put it on my Kaiser bill? Because you're not paying me anything. So you put it on my Kaiser bill? No. <laughs> I'm not paying anything for this, so that's why there's a money back guarantee. In fact, double your money back guarantee. That's how confident I am. All right, so step number one name the problem. Oh, do we need our notebooks? You don't need the notebooks. I have that big, fat handbook, hand out here. Oh, okay. Name the problem. This is actually where a lot of people get hung up because it's important that you be specific. Someone says, well, I want to work on my anxiety. And my response is, anxiety is too big. You're probably anxious about several things. So pick one thing that you're anxious about. Well, I'm anxious about my boss coming over for dinner next week. All right, so when you imagine your boss coming over for dinner, where's the anxiety? Well, it isn't really about my boss coming, it's about his wife. She's always critical, and she's all, I'm sure she's gonna judge me or make comments about my house or the food or something. So you're anxious about what your, the boss's wife is gonna say, okay? 
So now I've narrowed it down and gotten very specific. If you're working on physical health, again, I've, I've got pains. Well, where are the, where's the pain? Well, it's all over. Well, pick a spot. What's the most painful? Well, my left shoulder. Okay. So when you talk about the pain in your left shoulder, how would you describe it? Would you describe it as a burning pain, a jabbing pain, a dull throb, a dull ache? Again, I want to be specific. So I've got a dull throbbing pain in my left shoulder. Now we got a specific thing. And be, this becomes important because as you tap on points, you're actually going to be naming the problem over and over again. Okay? So we want to be specific. Um, you can work on physical problems. And again, be really specific about that. Now here's a fascinating thing. Sometimes people will work on a physical pain. They'll work on their shoulder and um, we'll go around and we'll do it. We'll all do it as a group, and afterwards they'll say, well, the pain moved. It wasn't my shoulder, now it's in my lower back. Pain doesn't move. It's not the way pain works. What has happened is, imagine that you've got a forest of trees, and you want to level on the trees. And so you take the tallest tree and you start chopping it down. And when you get about down a little ways, you realize, well, that's not really the biggest one. This is the biggest one. So you shift your attention. And then you go over and start chopping down this one. And then you get to a certain point and you realize, well, that's not the biggest one. This one's the biggest one. Pain is like that. You're working on a particular pain, and as it lessens, you'll notice other pains in different parts of the body. I'll still tell the person, go ahead and work on that first pain until it's gone completely. And then if you want, you go on to the next pain. Make sense? OK. So. We can work on physical. Now, here's an interesting thing about physical things. I had a client here maybe four years ago who had nausea. And I came to, I come to work on Wednesday mornings, and the nurse met me practically at the door saying, Jim, you got to work with this woman. She's been here for three days. She's had nausea for three days. It's not going away. The medications aren't helping. I said, okay. I don't know if it'll work, but I'm happy to try it. So I sit with her and we did the acupressure on the nausea. It didn't work. I don't repeat this if it isn't working. It'll work the first time or, or we're doing something wrong. So I stopped and I said, tell me, um, how do you feel about the fact that your body has nausea? Are you scared? Are you angry? Are you angry at your body because it's not getting better? She said, no, I'm terrified. That, my bo that it'll never go away. So we came up with the emotion associated with that nausea. And we did the acupressure on this terror that the nausea is never going to go away. And it went down, and it went down, and the terror was gone. So I, after the terror was gone, I said, now, how's your nausea? She said, it's the same. But then we did the acupressure on the nausea, and it went away in three rounds. The terror. The emotion was not allowing the body to relax, was not allowing the body to heal. And once we eliminated the emotion, then the physical stuff disappeared. So it's really interesting, the relationship between the physical and the emotional. So we've got a, the problem. The next thing we want to do is we want to rate the problem. And that's kind of simple. On a scale from 1 to 10, where 10 is the worst that it's ever been, how is it right now? Now this word now is important because acupressure is really a mindfulness technique. So we, we can't work on a problem that you had this morning. We can't work on a problem that you think you're going to have tonight. You only work on a problem that's actually you're experiencing in the moment. So if you're having a problem with insomnia, we're not going to work on it now. I can show you how to do it so that tonight, when you're having trouble sleeping, you can do the acupressure. So how is it right now? And you give it a number from 1 to 10. And then you tap on nine points, or you can hold them. Tap or hold these nine pressure points. It's the same nine points for everything. And what we're doing is we're actually working on nine different meridians. The nine major meridians. Each of these points is a different meridian on the, on the chart.
And then you check in and rate the problem. Now this is where it gets kind of interesting. You do a round of acupressure, it takes about 45 seconds to a minute. And then I ask you to rate the problem. And you wouldn't think in 45 seconds you're going to notice and it didn't go away. But the reality is it will go, typically go down two points, sometimes three. I've had a few instances over the past 19 years, maybe 10 times, where a problem has gone from a 10 to a 0 in one round. But that's really rare. It's usually headaches. It's really effective for headaches. But mostly you'll go down two points. So your problem was, say, a 9. Your anxiety was a 9. And you do a round of acupressure and it goes down to a seven. You just do another round, go down to a five, and do another round and go down to a three. Do another round and go down to a one or a zero. One, two, three, four rounds of acupressure and you've gone from a nine to a zero. There's not a medication I can give that goes as fast as this. It's really stunning how quickly problems can go away. And then the question comes up, well, really? It's gonna work on everything? No. Nothing works on everything. Sometimes you're working along and it'll go down, and then at, at five, it stalls. You do a round of acupressure, nothing happens. Would well, you keep trying again? No. If it stalls, you go back to the original problem and check in. So I'm working with a woman who, uh, who's anxious about her boss's wife coming over for dinner. And we get down to a five and it stalls. I say, now go back to thinking about your having the boss over for dinner. Imagine the wife walking in and starting to be real critical of you. Where's your anxiety? She says, well, it's not anxious. I'm kind of angry. What's happened is, when this leveled off, that the emotion switched. So then I'll rate the anger and go through this process. Maybe the anger's a 10, and we'll work. Maybe we'll go to a zero that time. Or maybe somewhere down here it'll stall again, and it'll change to another emotion, like sadness, disappointment, frustration. You can clear one emotion after another. In fact, this is how I do trauma work. I have a person tell me the story of their trauma, and as soon as we start to hit a, a strong emotion, we'll clear it. Then we'll go back to the trauma and tell the story. And if we hit another emotion, and we'll clear it. Now this might take an hour, hour and a half. I've gone as long as three and a half hours doing that, but it's faster than any other trauma technique that I've ever done. It's really powerful. It's called the tearless trauma technique in the acupressure world because you don't have to get into and feel all those emotions. The minute they start to bubble up, you clear them. Okay, so that's the basic technique. Really four steps to it. Now the next important part is where are the points? What's the point of The first point is right here between your eyebrows. There's actually two needle points at the beginning of each eyebrow. Those are the acupuncture points. But I just take my three fingers and I tap on that bone. Right there in the middle. And I get both pressure points, left and right. Yeah, right there. And then follow that, that eye socket around until you get to the side of your eye. There's a little notch right here. That's point number three. I forgot point number one. Point number one is the side of your hand. What I tell people to do is just point your thumb at the ceiling and then bring your fingertips underneath. This is the one that Roger came up with later, the one that does the affirmation. So you tap on this and you do an affirmation. And we'll cover that and it's in the handout. So that's point number one. Point number two, the eyebrow. Point number three, side of eye. They're really creative with these. Uh. <laughs> point number four is under your, oh, excuse me. Point number four is under your eye. Right there on the cheekbone. Directly under your iris. Now, don't be tapping on yourself and healing yourself before we find out what the problem, <laughs> we find out what the problem is. <laughs> then under, under your nose. Right there in the middle. The, the little mustache spot there. The next point is under your lower lip. 
I often refer to this as the Kurt Douglas spot. Kurt had a big dent, temple right there. And then, this one is probably the trickiest. Right at the top of your sternum are these two little bumps where your collarbones come in. And between them is a little depression. You notice a little drawing there. In acupuncture, they'll say go to the depression and go down one inch, and then go left an inch, and go right an inch, and those are the two needle points. For acupressure, you can just knock on that bone. You're going to get both of those needle points. You can use your fingertips, you can use the flat of your hand, or you can use your knuckles, doesn't matter. So at the top of the sternum. Top of the sternum, right there. Right here. Yep. Just before they join in. And then, the next one is, you go to the armpit and you go down four inches. So you go to your armpit, you go down four inches, make a little claw, and then tap. For men, when your fingers are on the pressure point, you, your palm of your hand will typically be over your nipple. That only works for men. If I tell women to put the palm of your hand over your nipple, some women go a lot lower. It has something to do with gravity, I've been told. <laughs> so women say that it's about the middle of your bra strap. <laughs> now, if you find it is tender, don't press hard. Just rest your fingers lightly. Oftentimes people will report that one or more of these are tender. And that's an excellent indicator that you need that you've got some blockage there. Yeah. The same thing happens in reflexology. What they do in reflexology is they actually look for tender spots and massage them. Okay, and then the last point is right at the crown of your head, right on the top of your head. What I do is I just tap, either with my knuckles or with my fingertips, and just make a little circle happen there. Now, do they have to be in any particular order? My experience is no. Do they have to be right side or left side? Doesn't seem to matter. People tend to use the side of their dominant hand. Oh. Can you do both sides? You can, but I haven't really noticed any difference. Okay. The reason that I do them in this particular order is because it's a, it's a kind of a memorization tool. I do the side of the hand, and then I start at the forehead, and I make a question mark. And all six, and six of those points are in the question mark. Around the eye, under the nose, under the lip, and then the, the dot, the question mark. Then the only thing you have to remember is under the arm and the crown of the head. So it's just kind of a mnemonic. It's just kind of an easy way to remember that. Questions about that? Okay, cool. So let's just do it together. And... Um, Walk through it. I'm going to ask people to work on an actual issue, but I don't need to know what it is. One of the beauties of the acupressure is I don't really need to know what the problem is you're working on. If I'm working with you one-on-one, -on -one, I'd prefer to know that, because I'll, I'll make up things that we can say. But in a group setting, I don't need to know. The only thing I really would like to know is how would you rate the problem right now? on a 1 to 10 scale, whatever you're working on, just give me a number from 1 to 10. You, want, you guys want to play? Give it a try? Yeah. Okay. So let's just, Joanne, are you going to do this with us? Mm -hmm. you got you got something you want to work on? Um, sad. Sad. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate that right now? At the moment, um, about 2 to Pretty low. Coming up. You got anything else that's oh. stronger than that right now? My hand, the anger toward my husband. Mm -hmm. So when you think about your husband right now, sadness. Sadness. How, and how is this? How sad when you think about your husband? Real sad. Give me a number. Ten. Ten. Okay. Is it? By the way, I won't put the names on the video. I'll eliminate that part. <laughs> On a scale of one to ten? Five. Five. Okay. Um I still have to think about my thing. Sure. Tell me your name. Mm, 
my anxiety around this particular topic is about it, seven when I think about it. Okay. <laughs> Flakiness. Mm -hmm. Flakiness. Flake, yeah, on a scale of 1 to 10. Um, yeah, I flakiness, what does that mean, flakiness? That means just not, not following through on anything. Okay, that's way too general. Um, Is there something that you have been avoiding? People. Family. Family. Friends. Okay, and when you... Responsibility. Pick, yeah. Again, you got to pick one. Mm -hmm. The more specific we are, the more likely it is to succeed. So pick something that you've been a little bit flaky on recently. Friends. A friend that you haven't been calling or? No, after one. Can you pick one? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't need to know the name of it, but when you say flaky, you have, you've been not calling people? Yes. Okay, so is there a, a friend that you used to call and you haven't been calling lately? Mm -hmm. I never have. You never have. Never been. No. Okay. See how it's it was shameful. No, it's not bad. I mean, if you're not a social <coughs> person, it's fine. Um. Yeah. So I don't know what to. Do. So yeah. how about the guilt you feel? Yeah. On not being social. Yes. Okay. Uh, ten. Ten. So it's the guilt that I feel about yes. not being social. Yeah, I feel anxious about losing my job and not finding another one. Okay. It would be nine. Right there with you. <laughs> so, how I would phrase that is the worry that I won't find another job. That's or the anxiety that I won't find another job. Sounds like what, what I, the phrase I would use. Anxiety. Yeah. Okay. Have you got something specific that you're anxious about? Yeah, family. Okay. Uh, six. Um, a ten for stress. Is there something specific that you're stressed about? Um, my family and my boyfriend. Okay. Pick one or the other so that you I can focus on it. I my boyfriend. All right. Uh, I don't know if it counts or not, but insecurity. You're insecure, so one of like so it's self-worth issues, like self-doubt. Right. So here's a fun, and I, I love working with belief systems. Um, someone says, you know, I have low self-esteem. So how I might do that is you pick an affirmation. Now, I'm not a big affirmation fan, but in this particular case, it's really kind of effective. You pick an affirmation like, I am filled with self-confidence. And then, as you say that out loud, and then you read your BS meter. <laughs> you know, imagine the old scale like this. My BS meter goes 10, that's complete BS, because I'm not. Oh. So, then you rate it in on 10, then you tap. This belief that I'm not self-confident, this belief that I'm not self And then you tap on it, and then you say this, the affirmation again. I am filled with self-worth. And check your BS meter. Typically, it'll go down a couple of points each time you do it. And usually around the five or six, the person that I'm working with will actually start telling me why they're worthwhile or why they're loved by them. They'll actually, their mind will actually start generating answers to that. So, okay? Um, I'm feeling intense, anxiety, about walking outside the doors in about two hours. Great, very specific. <coughs> Depression. Now, okay, this is another interesting one. Depression is a tough one. It turns out there are six different kinds of depression. And I used to tap on depression and not have any luck. And then I studied with this guy who said, look, depression's too big. Pick one of the symptoms. Are you not eating at all or are you eating too much? Are you not sleeping at all or are you sleeping too much? Are you having feelings of worthlessness or helplessness or, and, and get a specific under the depression. Now, with depression, you might have to work on several of them, but you do one, one at a time. So what would you feel would be your, one of your major symptoms of depression? Helplessness. Helpless, okay. And on a scale of one to 10, as you think about right now, how helpless do you feel? About six. About six. Great, did we get everybody? Oh, yes. Um, overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. From homework and school. 
So when you think about homework, how over how stressed do you get? How overwhelmed do you get? Like a nine. Perfect. Great. Thank you guys. All right. So you the idea is you've got your phrase, your problem that you're going to say to yourself. What I as I tap with you, I'm going to say regarding this problem. And you fill in the blank. I don't want you to to be tapping and say, regarding this problem, I want to say, regarding this feeling of overwhelm when I think about my homework, or regarding this anxiety when I think about going home. Make sense? So I'll say a problem, and you fill in the blank. All right, so thumb up in the air. Doesn't matter which one. Doesn't matter which one. And then bring your fingertips underneath, and you start tapping. So we don't say nothing? Yes, you do. Good Starting now, say to yourself, even though I have this... Fill in the blank. I totally and completely accept myself. Once again, even though I have this, I totally and completely accept myself. One more time. Even though I've got this blankety blank problem, I totally and completely love and accept myself. I'm okay. Now, between your eyes, tapping. Now, from now on, you don't do the whole affirmation. From now on, you just name the problem. This feeling of blank every time I think about. And then you move to the side of your eye. Start tapping. Focus on the sensation of anxiety in your body, the tightness, the fear, whatever it is. Feel the sensation in your body and then name it. This feeling of anxiety every time I think about. Good, and then under your eye, on the cheekbone, start tapping. Allow your attention to go to the sensation, the, the feeling, the tightness, whatever it is, and then name it. And then you move under your nose. Tapping. Allow your attention to go to the problem, the physical sensation in your body, and then give it a name. This feeling of X every time I think about Y. And then under your lip. Start tapping. Attention goes to the body. And then name it. Feeling. In on the collarbone. Tapping. Aware of the body, feeling the sensation of tightness, of fear, of anxiety, whatever it is, and name it. This feeling. Whenever I think about. I'm ready to breathe. Okay, under your arm. Go down to the armpit, go down about four inches. Now you can do the same side of your body or you can do across your body, whatever is comfortable. Tapping. Allow your attention to go to the problem. And then name it. This feeling of whenever I think. And then the crown of the head. Right on top of the head. This feeling of whenever I think about All right. Now I'll just pause for a minute and just kind of check in. Think about that thing that you mentioned. Uh, it's a shift off because I became more aware of my anxiety about a specific problem. Were you tapping on that specific problem? Or did you switch? Uh, I rated it higher anxiety than I started with, with a five, so. So now it's what? Nine. Nine? Yeah. Okay. I feel like I'm kind of numb about it. Like I just can't feel anything about it. What were you feeling before? Like. You were a nine? And now would the, what would the number be? I don't know if I was a nine before, like. Now that's an interesting thing. Originally we weren't rating things. 
when we first started doing this back in the early 80s, they weren't doing the number thing. And people would do around the back of the person and say, oh, that's not really a problem. Because it was, in fact, going down. It doesn't mean that the issue went away. It's just that the attachment to the emotional baggage associated with the problem went away. So it's worth experimenting. I, I would work with you more on that and have you actually go and envision it and think about it again yeah, and see if emotions I can't really come up. even access the emotions. I can't like That's envision it right now. Perfect. That's what we're working on here. Okay, Glenn? Probably like six. Six. Say five point two. Five point two. Uh, about seven. Seven. Really typical. Now, if a person doesn't go down at all, <coughs> my theory is that we're not working on the right problem. We don't have the right thing that we're working on. It, so it shifted to something else. I have trouble focusing on things. Yes, and that, that's really common. What were you were you originally focusing on? The sadness. Sadness. And what's the sadness so, like now? Um, it's still there if I think about it. Okay. Yeah. Is it still as strong or is it lessened a little bit? Okay. Because that's what we're working on. Shifting, like I said with the tree thing before, changes the problem, changes the issue. Here's a classic one. Um, somebody says, well, I have this pain in my neck. So how would you rate the pain? It's probably a nine. Okay, so we tap on the, act, on the neck. I said, okay, so now how is the pain in your neck? And they start to move their head. But that's not the original test. The original test, they were just sitting there, and they had a nine. So without moving, well, I really don't feel the pain now. But when I move there, OK, so now we've got a new test. Oh, so the first one, the pain went away. Now, when you move your head to the left, how is it? OK, it's an eight. So we'll tap on, when I move my head to the left, we'll tap on that. I've actually seen people who have had difficulty turning their head, and after a couple rounds of acupressure, they're really, they're rotating and they're getting full range. It's fascinating how this technique works. I actually want something to share. For me, it worked some, some kind of strange because when I was typing and I tried to say that uh, I feel anxious about not finding another job, but my mind started to scold me and say, "Why on earth you don't find another job?" And so mm -hmm. yeah. I try to name the problem, but my brain is like, well, I don't know if you see this. And it's while typing, but then after, my fear is still kind of back. But while typing, my brain was contradicting me. Like, uh -huh. it's not, it's not. Why? You can do many things, there are many jobs around. How can you say yeah. that? Mm -hmm. So I had difficulty naming the problem when you're typing. Right, good. So what you're working on is a belief system. You're working on a thought that's getting in the way. And that's a beautiful discovery. Turns out that it isn't anxiety, it's a belief system, this belief that I'll never find a job. So you tap on this belief, and the belief will walk away. And, you'll re and your mind will start saying, of course, I've always found a job when I wanted one. Yeah, I tried to shut it down. It's really fascinating how this works. They actually came, made up a movie a couple of years ago, and the working title of the movie was Try It On Everything. And in the movie, they get a group of people, they interview them with their problems, and then they go on a four-day retreat, and they, they had a retreat, and they had meals, and they would have like an hour session where they work on their issues, and then they interview them all at the end. A variety of things, and this problem just dropped away. So we, I have it here, but it's like a 90-minute movie. So uh, this one here, trying on everything, is like a four-minute clip from the movie. I started doing this in 98, and within about six months, I had on the back of my business cards, I had the pressure points on the back of my business cards, and everybody that came into my office learned the acupressure technique, whether they needed it or not. Just because I figure it's a tool that you can carry with you. In the handout, I'd walk through the whole story, tell you about Roger and the woman, Mary, with the phobia. And then there's a picture here of all of the pressure points and explaining them in detail and how to use the affirmation. And then this page is the total technique as a one page summary from start to finish with just little cues about it, the nine pressure points, the affirmations. And then I have some scripts. There's a script on forgiveness, quitting smoking, 
Overcoming it, Cravings and Addictions. This is a kind of a fun one. Uh, one of the websites, a woman by the name of uh, Sonal Pandey, um, has a website and she'll send you an email every couple of days about her techniques. She has a 21 day program that, you, she, that I believe is free. Anyway, this one is called Going From Grumpy, Going From Grumpy to Giggly. And then what you say, it has a little script. There's one when the block isn't obvious, and then I have a list of books and videos, and two websites. Gary mentioned in the video that he has a website and a free manual. Sonnell also has a 72-page manual that is free as a download. So lots of resources. And just for fun, I thought I'd bring this. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your friend? Or? <laughs> when I was in Sri Lanka, when I was in Sri Lanka, I had the opportunity of meeting a boa constrictor, and I, don't know. and I had to do a little bit of tapping. But um, <laughs> a little bit of tapping. Around looking at you, like, what but, is he doing? But I, a little bit of tapping you have to do. <laughs> but I've I've done phobias on snakes and spiders and heights and needle phobias and elevator phobias. It's probably one of the easiest things to do. Typically, a phobia goes away in about 10 minutes. Oh. And it's gone forever. It's really kind of amazing. Yeah, I had a guy here who, here at Brookside, who had a needle phobia. And uh, we did about 10 minutes together. And I said, OK, let's go get that injection. And he said, OK. So we went down. And I said, we sat him down. And I said, I asked the nurse, I said, we're going to just work with, with him about this. So get me one of the uh, swabs, the um, alcohol swabs. Because that would have been a trigger for him. So we rubbed it. No trigger, no problem. He's all ready for the injection. It's like really fun. Did, did you get yes. a chance to practice oh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm in Sri Lanka uh, this method? Or I taught it to a bunch of people. Yeah, I was yeah. actually there after the tsunami, and uh, I was training a group of volunteers. I had 100 students. There were five of us doing a, a four day workshop on how to go out into the different camps and help with um, after the tsunami. So I taught them the acupressure, I taught them mindfulness. Oh, I was just going to say, does it work with people phobia? Yes, of course. Okay. Social phobia. Yeah. Social phobia. I have a guy here who had a social, social. phobia and um, didn't like to talk, didn't even want to say his name in community meetings. So I said, so what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to read a poem. And he went into full-blown panic. So we did the acupressure and cleared the panic. So now imagine that you're gonna read this poem in the community meeting. Anxiety went up to about a five, we tapped on it again. So then after about 10, 15 minutes, I said, so can you read this in the community? He said, sure. He said, okay, I'm gonna ask you tonight in community meeting to read this poetry, poem to the group, and he did. Now about five minutes before community meeting, I gave him the poem, he stopped and he did one more round of acupressure, and then he got stood up and read the poem. And it was tickled, just delighted that it worked. So, like I say, try on everything. I don't believe we should give away our power to fear, to anxiety, to depression, or physical pain. And if this is a tool that you can use and it's effective for you, it's free. And there's the money back guarantee. <laughs> Any class questions? Okay, let me show you, um, I usually show this at the beginning, but I, oh, did I bring it? Yeah, here it is. So I'm going to show you my acupuncture video. How I usually frame this is I say to people, this is about acupuncture and why I don't teach acupuncture. Really, one of the reasons is you have to have a medical degree, but, um... ลื้อตึงเจ้าโคลื้อตึงเจ้าโคลว่าถอยเลยแม่งมึงเหล่าสิว่าลื้อหล่อจ้ําเยอะปากว่าลื้อจะเฮาแซลื้อเทวะเออ